Hi, welcome to today's session and I'm going to show you how the Boolean operators work here in Blender first of all we'll start by drawing a cube and scanning it up a bit and then we're going to modify that cube using a monkey and there's nothing like modifying a cube with a monkey to make your Fridays go with a swing. Okay, well the Boolean operators come in three different flavours. There's intersect, union and difference. And what intersect does is everywhere the two objects are present together is an object. Where they're not present together is nothing. What uh, difference does is it subtracts one object from the other, leaving in this case a monkey shaped hole as we will see later on. And what union does is it adds, so it'll add one object to another. Now because this process works better on a, something with a lot of vertices I'm just going to subdivide that cube a few times, not too many times, just a couple. And then we'll go with the cube selected, we'll go over to the modify panel, select Boolean, and instantaneously, as soon as we tell it what object to use, which obviously is going to be our monkey, the cube disappears. Oh no! But don't fret, it's actually inside the monkey or inside a part of the monkey. If I move it around you'll see there's like sort of a water line. So if I move it up and down you can see and if I was if I apply that modifier which I'm going to in a minute then what you'll get is part of a monkey and of course the original monkey will still be left. Ta-da! Okay, so that's the first one. Hit Control Z and unapply that. And the next thing that we're going to look at is difference. Now we'll look at union first. Right, so everywhere the monkey was sticking out of the cube, the cubes had bits bolted onto it. So as you can see, the original monkey is still underneath there. But we've got kind of a, a low relief monkey. In the top, of, embedded in the top of the cube, and that's sometimes quite useful. So I hit Control Z again, get rid of that, and now difference. Difference is the really useful one. We can subtract one shape, in this case a monkey, away from another shape, our cube, and produce a monkey-shaped three-dimensional hole. Now. You try sculpting that three-dimensional hole in any other way. Very difficult. In fact, that's one of the main things that Boolean modifiers are used for, is to make complex shapes. Um, especially symmetrical shapes or machine-like shapes. It would be very difficult to produce in any other way. Um, right, we'll get rid of that. And we'll get on with modelling a UFO. Dun, dun, dun. Well, first of all, I want it in the middle, and I'm not going to get it in the middle by moving around. So we'll uh, sort of kind of. Um, hmm. Okay. We'll scale it up and flatten it. It's probably the best thing to do. I'm going to make quite a big ball, then I'm going to use the blue handle and flatten it right the way down. Most of the way down anyway. There we go. Now the easiest thing is to, is to put it in the centre because obviously if we put it in the centre and we put the um, cursor in the centre as well, then when we add something, like another ball, so uh, it will 
be superimposed exactly over the centre line. So snap the cursor to the centre and snap the um, sort of minstrel shape we've just um, created into the onto the cursor. Right. So there's a ball in there somewhere. I've just added. Let's scale that up. I want scaling up quite a bit because what I'm going to do is scale it up and flatten it and it's going to be used to machine a hollow out of the bottom making it a kind of a frisbee shape I guess, that's the idea anyway Now I only want this hole, I want this sort of spherical hole cut in the bottom not in the top Flatten that out as well. Push it up inside. Select our original shape and apply. It's going to be difference again. Hit apply. Take away what we first thought of. And as you can see, we've now got a kind of frisbee shape. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. Next thing, we'll add a cylinder. And what I'm going to make is kind of a cylinder, cylindrical body to the ship that goes through the middle, but vertically through the middle. I don't know, you remember the old Adamski pictures of UFOs? Yep. So using the same technique of snapping to the centre again and scaling it up. So this is going to kind of have a flattened out Adamski cabin but the entire top is going to be glass. And I want it sticking quite a long way out of the bottom as well because I'm going to make that bottom a bit more interesting because it's a bit featureless at the moment. There we go, and this time it's union because we're adding the two shapes together. And there you go. There's nothing up my sleeve. And voila, the original cylinder. Get rid of that. And we'll add a sphere to make the glass dome at the top. We want it to be a little bit inside so we've got kind of a bit of a ridge. And I'm going to turn that into somewhat of a different shape later using the uh, edit mode, but uh, that will do for now. Once again, it's going to be the same thing as we did just now. It's going to be union, which is adding them together. So we've now added the sphere on, but only the bit of the sphere that sticks out. So it's only that little bit that you can see that's been added. There's nothing on the bottom because you've still got the cylinder there. Now it looks like a giant mushroom. Hmm. So I'll just taught you how to make mushrooms. Never fear. I'm going to hollow out the bottom of the mushroom stalk. And then I'm going to cut it up using a cube. It's going to be a quite interesting shape. One that would be ridiculously difficult to sculpt. So, select our mushroom, select the sphere. This time we want difference. 
So this we're cutting using the sphere to cut a half spherical hole out of the bottom of the cylindrical bit there. There you go. Now you think for a minute how complicated that shape is and how quickly we've done it. So far this has been made in what? Three minutes? Four minutes? I don't know, something like that. If I wasn't talking to you, it would probably be even quicker. There's our cube. And I'm going to scale that up and alter the shape of it a bit. What it's going to leave us is like four legs that get thicker towards the top. It doesn't look like that now, but it will do. And we're going to edit and change the shape of our cube simply by scaling the top. So the top of that cylindrical shape won't be cut. And remember the whole of this is a hollow mesh at the moment. It's not, you know, just a collection of cylinders and stuff warped together using join. It is actually all one mesh. Increase the scale of the bottom. There you are, you can see what we get. We get this kind of semi-circular, almost like flower petals. I want them longer than that. I need to make sure that our cube doesn't actually stick through the top of the UFO because I don't want to drill a square hole for it. That would totally spoil the effect. Alright. I just remembered I had the wrong thing selected. <laughs> Maybe not. There you go. Get rid of the cube. And now you've got quite a strange shape down there. See, it's a UFO, it spins all over the place. All we have to do now is add some materials and some textures, and we can do a quick animation. However, before we do that, I want to make it slightly more interesting. It's the top, really, it's pretty pedestrian. Um, and I think at the moment the proportions of it are, too, are wrong as well needs to be flatter but uh, anyway now I'm going to try and use an automated tool the loop select tools to uh, select a ring but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't work because very often when you do use boolean modifiers you get these triangular vertices and Blender just hates them. Really hates these triangular vertices and it just won't have anything to do with them. Right. So, I've got rid of duplicates and there were a few. They're off and on after you've done booleans. And what was I going to do?
There it is. That's what I was looking for. Recalculate normals before I try and do the select. Hit the A key to deselect everything. And select a couple of points and try for an edge loop. Mm, nah, it's not going to work, is it? Let's just give it a good old college try once more. Nah. Okay, I'm going to have to go around and select that ring of vertices manually. It's only 32 of them. That may only take me a few seconds. It's one of those painful things that sometimes on some shapes the automated tools don't work too well because they just can't tell what the hell's going on. And I'm going to extrude this. And you get like a kind of a frilly collar effect. It's <laughs> the best way to describe it. There we go. It just extrudes into a plane. So I'll release that and then scale it. That's going to come out of it and down. And I just want to make this a more interesting shape. So that plane has come out and up and then down. Because very often if you just plonk something like uh, that dome in the middle of something, then it doesn't look right because you're kind of expecting to see some kind of frame or support structure around it. That's exactly what we're making here. Make it go slightly outwards, I think. Something like that. And just make sure that the vertices actually go through the planes. Yeah, that's much better. I like that. So I was saying just a few materials and textures and animate a quick scene. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to adjust the shape of it a bit. That's a bit better. Yeah, I can just see that whizzing through the sky. And in fact, you're going to see it whizzing through the sky. Now, I even put a few little things that look a bit like people inside there. So that's how you quickly build a UFO.